Welcome. In this video, we're going to be talking about hydrohalogenation reactions. They're addition reactions across a pi bond. And the reagents that we use is typically hydrogen chloride or hydrogen bromide. Right? So what it is, is an addition reaction. Right? It's an addition reaction across a pi bond. Right? So the pi bond is really what's acting as the nucleophile, right? And it's attacking the electrophile, which is the hydrogen. So we call it an electrophilic addition reaction. Okay, so we're gonna consider two different mechanisms and two different examples. One, as a, one as a Markovnikov addition, okay? But we'll also consider an anti-Markovnikov addition. All right, so what's the difference? In a Markovnikov addition, the hydrogen is being added to the less substituted position, or we could think about it that the halogen is being added to the more substituted position. So we're going to consider an example of a methyl cyclohexene, right? And if we react methyl cyclohexene with something like hydrogen bromide, right? It's an addition reaction. So we're adding two groups across a pi bond, the hydrogen and the chlorine. In a Markovnikov addition, the halogen adds to the more substituted position of that carbon-carbon double bond. And that's what we refer to as a Markovnikov addition. Right? You could think about it that the hydrogen adds to the less substituted position or that the halogen adds to the more substituted position of that carbon carbon double bond. It's easier to think about it in terms of the halogen because we actually draw it, right? Whereas the hydrogen, we're not drawing it. Hydrogen is attached to carbon, we don't draw them in a line bond structure. All right. So this particular carbon has one, two, three groups attached to it, so it's tri-substituted. This particular carbon has two groups attached to it, so it's a di-substituted alkene. Well, in an anti-Markovnikov addition, we're still going to use methyl cyclohexene, right? Still going to use hydrogen bromide. But in an anti-Markovnikov addition, the halogen adds to the less substituted end of that carbon-carbon double bond. Right? So what's the difference between this particular reaction and this particular reaction? Is it that one is a minor product, one is a major product? No, the reaction conditions are different. In an anti-Markovnikov addition, it takes place in the presence of peroxides, and the simplest of peroxides is hydrogen peroxide, right? Peroxide. It's something R-O-O-R, -O -O -R. and the simplest is hydrogen peroxide. It goes through a completely different mechanism than what we've seen before. It goes through what we call a radical mechanism. Right? Um, peroxides are radical initiators. So sometimes it's called the, it's commonly known as the anti Markovnikov addition, but sometimes you also see it as the peroxide effect. Right? So it goes through a different mechanism, and we'll take a look at that in a moment, but we'll start with the Markovnikov addition. Okay, so in the very first step of the reaction, we have a reagent, hydrogen bromide, right? Um, if you take a look at our substrate, our starting material, we have a pi bond. Pi bond can act as a nucleophile. It has high electron density. Will it attack the proton or the bromine? Remember, there's the partial charges. The hydrogen has a partial positive charge. The bromine has a partial negative charge. The pi bond is acting as a nucleophile. So it's two electrons will actually form a bond to the 
hydrogen. So it takes it as a proton, and those two electrons move to bromine. All right, so if those two electrons, those two electrons are being used up to form a bond to the proton, a carbocation will be formed, right? A carbocation could either form on this carbon or on this carbon. In this case, we have a tertiary carbocation. In this case, we would have a secondary carbocation. So what happens is that the hydrogen or the proton, the proton, because those two electrons are, you know, forming a bond to the proton, which is acting as an electrophile, and that's why we call it an electrophilic addition reaction. It will add to the less substituted position so that a more stable carbocation is formed, right? And then in the second step, we have the bromine, which is now an, acting as a nucleophile, and it will attack that carbon, which is part of the carbocation. All right, and because it goes through a carbocation, both enantiomers are possible as the final product, right? So if you end up having a chiral center, this molecule is symmetrical, but both enantiomers can form, right? But in this case, it's not a chiral center. But if it is, both enantiomers can form. Okay. So that's the mechanism. The second step is much like the end of an SN1 mechanism where you have a carbocation and the nucleophile attacks the carbocation, right? And both enantiomers can form. Both enantiomers um, form if a chiral center. If we have a chiral center in the product, both enantiomers form. All right, well, how does it look like when it's an anti-Markovnikov addition? It's going to go through a radical mechanism, right? And we're going to talk about that in a moment. So radical mechanisms are slightly different than what we have been drawing this far. All right, I'm going to go ahead and erase that as well. Okay, so there's mul multiple steps that could take place when we talk about radical mechanisms, right? One is known as the initiation step. So we're going to talk about the different steps in radical mechanism. One is initiation, and that's when radicals are initiated and peroxides in the presence of light or heat, right? Um, initiate radicals. So what happens is this bond is cleaved and instead of using the curved arrows that we typically use where we're moving two electrons, right, we use what we call fish hook arrows. It's a single-sided arrow indicating that we're only moving one electron. So when we're breaking the bond between hydrogen peroxide, one electron goes to the oxygen, the other electron goes to the other oxygen, right? So we end up forming two radicals, right? A radical is a single unpaired electron. They're highly reactive. And it ends up being more like a chain reaction where one radical will form another radical. So then we have the radical. If we treat that with our actual reagent, what will happen is it will initiate more radicals. So the hydrogen will form a bond to the radical, and then we end up forming water, right? But it's really not the hydrogen. We have to show it from the bond. So it's the bond that's being broken, but each electron goes to one atom. So bromine takes its electron, the hydrogen forms a bond um, and breaks that radical, and then we end up having bromine radical. So that's what we call the initiation step. Following the initiation step is what we call the propag propagation step, right? And that's where different radicals, new radicals will actually form, and part of the product will start to form as well. So now we could take our methyl cyclohexene. All right. 
What happens if it reacts with a bromine radical? Right? So this pi bond is to be cleaved. But one electron will go to form a bond with a bromine, and one electron will go to one of the two carbons. And radical stability is similar to carbocation, where a tertiary radical is more stable than a secondary radical. And because of that, that pi bond, one electron is going to this carbon, right? The other electron is going in to form a bond with bromine. Right? So where the methyl is, now we have this tertiary radical, and then we formed a bond to bromine. Right? So you could have a number of different propagation steps. Our final step would be the termination step. Or, really, that's really not termination. We're still part of propagation step. Um, one is called a hydrogen obstruction. So now this that really has a bromine attached to it, and it is a radical, could react with a reagent. Right? And form a bond to the hydrogen. So the radical, the hydrogen and its electron, bromine, radical, Bromine. All right, so we get a bromo, you know, one bromo, two methyl cyclohexene as our final product, which is our final product right here. So the steps is really initiation, propagation, and then there's termination where different radicals will form a bond. So you end up forming like bromine, you could end up forming peroxide once again, and you end up forming the product as well. So those are two of the three steps, but then our final product is formed, right? One example of the final step, which is termination. And you end up having a number of different termination reactions where, for instance, you could have two of the bromine radicals that will form a bond as part of the termination step. Right? So you end up getting different. So all the radicals are basically terminated, and that's just by changing the reaction conditions slightly. All right, I hope this was helpful.